I like to encourage directors to be vulnerable around actors and to, to be able to say to them, look, you know, something's off here and I don't know what it is. What are the biggest misconceptions people have about actors? That they're too sensitive, that their antenna is always up, that they're constantly watching themselves in the mirror, walk, walk, you know, almost as a character walking into a scene? Well, I think for directors, the directors that I meet, and I, you know, I taught workshops for directors for many years, and now I do some time, I do some consulting with uh, directors getting pre preparing to uh, make a, a project. And I think, I think the biggest misconception is that, that they're fragile somehow, that, uh, that you can't dare talk to them because they'll go into a, so they'll start crying or go into a rage or, 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 or get upset if they're, uh, if, if you say anything about, about their, about their work. And I suppose where this comes from is that actors do tend to be more expressive than actors sort of tend to call them civilians. People who are not actors tend to be in the act world of actors, civilians. So actors are more expressive um, and they might, they might cry if you tell them that uh, the last take they were overacting a bit, but they get over it. <laughs> they're, more com they're comfortable with feelings. And the way I see it, the misconception on the part of people who are not actors, that actors are you know, too, too excitable, too, uh, too agi agitated too quickly, um, is that in, in real life, we're not allowed to do that. I think anybody would do that if they could. And um, we're, we're conditioned out of it. Children respond, whatever they feel, they express, right? They feel they're, they're hurt, they cry. They're angry, they scream. And then little by little, we condition them so that we, in society, we say, use your words. And we're, we're, when, when we tell, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do this, but when we tell children, use your words instead of acting out your feelings, we're asking them to intellectualize their feelings. And that's the process of society is intellectualizing our feelings so that people can get along and everybody can, you know, get to work every day and, and, uh, you know, not scream at each other when, um, on, although of course that's happening more than it, that people screaming at each other. It's so strange, but uh, reverting to that, uh, kind of childish behavior, but, but, uh, so it's good if people don't revert to their childish behavior in, in the form of road rage, but, um, but for actors, it's part of a craft. It's, you know, being available to their feelings, being able to uh, uh, cry or or stomp their feet is is part of their craft, and um, I think I think sometimes directors take it personally. They think, oh, they hate me, you know, oh, they're 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 fragile. But actors aren't that fragile. They really like to be told. Uh, we were talking earlier about you know if you have lipstick on your teeth or something. They really want to know that. It shouldn't be awkward at all to tell an actor that there's lipstick on their teeth, that because uh, they don't want to be photographed with lipstick on their teeth. So they're they're grateful if someone tells them, and uh, and and also if they're overacting. I mean, it might it might be it might be upsetting for them to hear that, but in the end, they would rather hear that than be cut out of the movie, which you might have to do in the editing room if the if the performance isn't good enough. And so let's suppose, I love that analogy of the lipstick on the teeth. Um, I, I'm doing a scene and you've noticed that I have lipstick on my teeth. It, you're, you're pulling me aside privately to tell me this? I, what's the best way to say, you know, Karen, well, I, could I talk to you for a moment? Well, I, actually, the makeup person should take care of this. Ah, okay. The makeup person should take care of this, but uh, uh, should be watching for this and and should be running up and uh, and taking care of it. Um, the, but it should be, everything should be private. 
Everything private. should be private. If the makeup person hasn't stepped forward and you have to say to the makeup person, will you go and take care of, there, there's makeup on her teeth, would you take care of that? Then um, there's no need to announce it to the crew. Sure, right? sure. And when, when directors have something to give direction or to say something about the, the take that just happened or what they want to try in the next one, that should always be private. Always be private. The act, the director should come up and take the the uh, actor uh, away a little bit uh, and privately, or whisper. Whispering is uh, is useful. It, it's never helpful to give a direction that the rest of the crew can hear. And the reason for that is that then the crew is watching to see if the actor takes that direction. And the actor knows that they're being watched, not just by the director, who hopefully they trust and want to please, but by a whole bunch of people who, who may not know so much about acting. They're watching, being watched by a whole bunch of people and maybe even gossiped about. Uh, so it's very, uh, very, very helpful for a, an actor's safety to, to speak to uh, for the director to speak to the actors privately, always away from away from the producers, away from the um, crew, and and it's 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 a, it creates a safety for the director as well, because I like to encourage directors to be vulnerable around actors, and to to be able to say to them, look. You know something's off here, and I don't know what it is. Can you tell? Can you do you have some ideas about what we might do here? And you don't want to say that in front of the crew. You want that to be a private conversation between you and the actor. But I do think it's very very helpful for directors to be able to tell an actor when they're when they when they're not sure what's wrong. Just. You know, to instead of jumping into fix it mode, a lot of directors feel like, oh, something's wrong. I have to fix it. But I want to encourage a collaboration between directors and actors, where the um, you know where where you draw, you 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 pick their brains, you you bring them into the process, you you uh, use their ideas and their skills to help you solve problems, that you solve problems together if there are problems. You'd said earlier about um, actors calling uh, quote unquote normies or whatever, civilians. Civilians. Right, so not, not, not normies. normies. So, okay, so, so uh, civilians. It, it almost brings me back to, let's say in the workplace, if you've ever worked in an office, like a nine to five job, I and have. the quiet and the just, you hear the typing and the picking up, hello, and it just, it's so subdued. But then if you've ever worked in a restaurant or the service industry, it's wild and crazy and people are <laughs> yelling. And that's acceptable in that world to, uh -huh. to a degree, right, as long right. as people are somewhat professional. But it almost sounds like that's the the analogy of what we see as, as performers, is sort of this bar environment versus the subdued library office where no one raises their voice. Everyone speaks in a very calm tone. But is that really true? Are actors really that... They can go there too. They can be, you know. Well, so actors are all different. Mm -hmm. Actors are all different. And some actors really like to be alone in between takes and not be sociable. And other actors like to horse around and and uh, jabber with their with their fellow actors. Um, they're, they're all different. They're, they're, all, they're all different. The, I mean, as far as the atmosphere on the set, the the director is responsible for that, you know, for creating an atmosphere uh, that, it, so the atmosphere might be full of excitement and and uh, kind of a feeling that we're all on edge and anything can go great or go, go wrong at any time. And that could be a very creative atmosphere or, or it can be very workmanlike and that can be a very creative atmosphere. So uh, yeah, yeah, the, act, the director set the tone. Ah, okay unless they've let that uh, duty slip away from them to, uh, you know, to someone else, like a producer or, a, or an actor, you know, a lead actor sometimes will, will take over. 
if there's a vacuum, if there's a vacuum, if the director has not set a tone of what they want to, how, how they want things to go on a set, then there's a vacuum. Someone will probably come in and it might not go the way you want it to. And that tone doesn't have to be verbally set. It could be set in, you know, action, how, how, they, how they work with other people. Well, it's part of how, why directing is a really hard job, really complex and hard job. You've got to be very, very prepared. You've got to have talked to everybody ahead of time, all of the crew chiefs, so that you're, well, they still call it on, on the same page. And um, so that people, so it's actions and words and, and it's, uh, you know, your own demeanor and, and um, uh, yeah. It's like any it's like any supervisor, I think. It's, you know the manage the the leadership skills, the leadership skills that you need for any job that's in a leadership position. 